Tesla battery day is complicated by the impact of Rivian and Lucid having hundreds of Tesla's former best engineers. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. We want to share that our show is made possible primarily by our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the show and would like to get uh, additional classes and discounts on those, as well as more information to allow you to better trade and invest with our daily uh, show that uh, covers more intensely that area, uh, please take the time. We also would greatly appreciate your liking and subscribing. So as we're coming into Battery Day, there's an interesting sort of complication that's emerged. And what that is is the fact that in the case of Rivian, the number of Tesla employees there exceeds 189. That, that's sort of the last count that they had. And one would say perhaps they have two or 3,000 employees, so that's a significant number of people. And most of those folks are not on the manufacturing line, they're on the engineering product and development, et cetera. In the case of Lucid, you have large numbers of Tesla employees there, notably the former head of the Model S program is, I guess, the chief technical officer currently at Lucid. So we wanted to sort of review some of the implications of what's going on here. So basically, what we're suggesting is that it's entirely possible that Tesla is in a position right now exactly like what Toyota did. Toyota developed a hybrid system between electric and gasoline. They've made a point to continue producing on their own, and they've also licensed to other OEMs that technology so that they can uh, make money off of it while Toyota still collects licenses. So we're now in an interesting situation now because Tesla has refer uh, they've refrained from licensing, but this is starting to really bring up the whole discussion of Microsoft versus Apple. Microsoft acquired the Windows ideas and technology from Apple and chose to license it, while Apple and Steve Jobs did not. The net result was that over time, Microsoft being affiliated with every other manufacturer of machines while Apple was limited to just its group, almost caused Apple to go out of business. And so only a loan from Microsoft was able to save Apple from its demise. So we're now in an interesting circumstance because in the case of, so basically Tesla has basically now started competing against its own technology when it comes from former employees bringing Tesla's technology to their new employers. In the case of Rivian, we have a situation where, I guess Ford and and then Amazon got together to put large amounts of money into Rivian. But what we're expecting is, what we're seeing in the F-150 is the Rivian technology becoming a skateboard that Ford actually puts its F-150s on top of. So basically, Ford can compete fairly easily with what Tesla is doing, given the support they've gotten by having all these former tes Tesla employees be a part of the development team at Rivian and bring that top technology to Ford. So Ford is one entity I do not expect to license te Tesla's technology if they chose to do so. The next issue is what's happening with Lucid, and the answer we're coming up with from Lucid is there's a reason why they have chosen not to uh, already have large numbers of manufacturing facilities available to produce their cars, and they're just focused on Arizona. It's our belief that they're, they're really focused as a strategy on licensing the technologies to every OEM that wants to buy it in the world, and then they can just do the Toyota routine and do small numbers of production uh, units that are at the high end, and so they're getting paid in both ways. They also 
from what the CEOs said, have set themselves up to be able to move down market in the pricing of their solution over time. And so we think that is a pretty formidable challenge from Tesla. The, uh, the, the challenge though right now is who's gonna win the licensing battle? Had Elon and company licensed previously, they would have been in great shape because the, the lack of, uh, the closer you get and the more competitors they're able to license solutions to OEMs, the pricing is gonna be very different than if you were the only solution as Tesla was perhaps three or four years ago. So now we're in an interesting situation where there's gonna be kind of a bidding war between Lucid and Tesla if they choose to go that route. And so I think right now that Lucid is a little bit more desperate because they don't have any money yet for all the work they've done. And so I think they'll be more inclined to cut price in ways Tesla might not. The, so this is why I'm saying this complicates the whole process of what happens after battery day. So the answer that everybody's coming up with in our group uh, of friends is that there's no need to worry about Elon and Tesla because they're gonna come out with such great technology on battery day that it's gonna shock the market and therefore cause all kinds of great things to happen for Tesla. And actually this is very possible. The challenge that we're seeing with this process though is a concept in economics called marginal utility. So the example we were just going through is the fact that, let's say you have two chicken places. In one case, KFC, the other Popeyes. All of a sudden, so your drive to Popeyes is about five miles away. Your KFC is maybe 30 blocks. So even though you like Popeyes, if you're in that area or whatever, you'll go by there, but you'll probably just take the chicken that's nearest by. And then one of my buddies pointed out that, well, what about the fact that when they had that new sandwich, not only did you have to go a distance to get to your Popeyes, but you had that line going around the block that made it difficult to buy one of those sandwiches. So what you're seeing is then a combo of reasons why it is that uh, while people, once people get their three to 400 miles of range from their $100,000, you're not as good at Tesla, no doubt about it, but you're in the ballpark. The incremental benefit that these folks might get to Tesla by going to Tesla is sort of dissipated or destroyed by the fact that they have dealerships for all the other OEMs in larger numbers everywhere to service them. This is one of the reasons why you've noticed that there's been a focus of the dealerships to try to limit Tesla's footprint of dealerships and stores and this inconvenience uh, by, that's being ex experienced by consumers is one way that those OEMs could close the gap. So what we're expecting over the next couple of years is once the deal is signed by Lucid with these folks and perhaps Tesla, you're all of a sudden gonna see comparable numbers on the low end for all of the cars, including Tesla's, and then you've gotta find a way to differentiate yourself from there. So I, I just think that I'm concerned because if Tesla chooses not to license and they're replaced in that licensing line by the folks at Lucid uh, or possibly even Rivian, they've already been placed by Rivian because the Ford pickup is going to be based on that, you actually are going to have a situation going on right now where um, not that it'll jeopardize Tesla in the short term, but the long term isn't as wide open because you now have Tesla competing with, with itself as other individuals or OEMs now have their solutions in hand. So uh, what do we think is gonna happen? As we've shared before, what we are expecting to see is that, you know, Elon could, he has three choices to make. As we said, hybrid, uh, a, a hybrid of the choices fully going 100% with uh, by himself as Steve Jobs did, and then you end up being isolated in the marketplace as everybody else is using the same technology that you have on your machines. 
So I just think right now we're in the zone where the brand new technology might prompt Tesla to say, hey, I think we can go it alone and be fine. And my concern is that it kind of makes sense in the short term, but given the advantages of dealership, money, production uh, facilities, et cetera, you know, you just have a, a battle royale with a large number of entities. And uh, this is the challenge that Napoleon talked about, which is fighting wars on multiple fronts at the same time, uh, probably not a good idea. And so therefore, I'm really hopeful that the decision making at Tesla's, uh, you know, really gets a grasp of this and implements it well, because when you're delivering new technologies like this and you think they're going to make a huge difference and you're not familiar with how marginal utility might work, it can really influence your thinking process and therefore give you an outcome or result uh, that were unexpected. And the challenge right now is that surprises at this stage of their growth could be brutal, both in the stock price as well as loss of business, et cetera. So we're thinking positive. Obviously, Rivian and Lucid haven't put a lot on the road yet or finished up the OEM agreements to allow competitors to deliver these new products yet. But it definitely works. is worth uh, watching and being in mindful of. At any rate, uh, we wanted to move on to our usual uh, health tips. Please note, 25 leg lifts while you're sitting in a chair. Just strap the weight around your leg and raise your leg 25 times, uh, both legs daily. Strengthens quad muscles, reduces chance of knee issues. Number two, don't forget, if you're pre-lovemaking, consider having a small salad or very, very little to eat because blood flow will be optimized uh, elsewhere and not just to your stomach as you're trying to digest that food. Third item is no more than once a week for fried foods. Fourth items is uh, consider a 30 SPF or better and a 5-2 or other diet when it comes to some fasting as a health and brain power method is also a wise plan. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, le Heathrow, Hebrew, Hoda, Hafez, Farsi, Hey, Do, Swedish, Strasvice, Russian, Nihao, Ma, Chinese, uh, Namaste. And in Jamaica, we say, enough respect, walk, good man. Have a great day. Bye for now. And thank you for joining us.